<laughs> Hi guys! <laughs> can we back up a little bit? <laughs> can can we back up? Can we back up guys? Hey guys, what's up and welcome to my channel. And this week I am going to be continuing on with the powder room makeover I have been doing for my mom. So if you haven't seen part one, I highly recommend going back and watching that first. A lot has happened and this was supposed to be a one video project, but let's just say things have not been going according to plan. This vanity is not gonna work. It's too big. Guys, this whole thing is damaged. So, I am actually now going to be building a custom vanity for this bathroom. And today, I am actually at my cousin's house because he is an amazing builder, woodworker, DIYer himself. And he has an amazing shop that I am going to use to build this vanity because I didn't bring any of the necessary tools I need to build a vanity. And let's be real, I actually just came out here for the animals. <laughs> and I love you, and I love you, and I love, oh, and I really love you. <laughs> so with all of that being said, I'm gonna head into his shop and let's get started building this vanity. Okay guys, so to get started building this vanity, I'm gonna get started by building a cabinet carcass. A cabinet carcass is just basically a stripped down version of a cabinet or the uh, kind of box that makes up a cabinet. And then it just depends on what you wanna add to your cabinet carcass. You can do frameless cabinets, you can do framed cabinets, it all depends. So what I'm gonna do is just quickly cut down the five pieces that I need to build the cabinet carcass. And then I'll explain how I'm putting it together and why I'm putting it together in that way. Okay guys, I have the five pieces I need to build this cabinet carcass and if you saw my video where I redid the built-ins in my studio, I had to build a cabinet carcass in that video as well. But when I made the cabinet carcass, I explained that I wanted the side pieces resting on the bottom piece because that will help support the weight because it's actually pushing down into a board and not relying on screws. But for this vanity, I don't want this plywood edge showing. So I'm actually gonna have the side pieces floating off to the side and I'm gonna use the bottom piece to screw into these side pieces. But I am going to build a frame to go underneath this cabinet carcass. So in the end, these side pieces are actually going to be resting on a piece of wood and not relying solely on these screws to hold everything up. So I'm gonna go ahead and build this cabinet carcass. I already went ahead and drilled some pocket holes for the bottom of this board. And I also drilled two pocket holes on the end of these boards, which will be the back support piece and the top support piece. So let's build a cabinet carcass. Nope, I am making a mess. Okay guys, look, cabinet carcass is all done and uh, basically this vanity is gonna be pretty easy peasy moving forward. So now I am gonna build a frame for this cabinet carcass to sit on and also I am going to be attaching these legs to the frame before I attach it to the cabinet carcass. These are just some decorative wood legs that I bought off of Amazon and they're really pretty and normally when I build a frame out I have it so that the wood is sitting up like this but I don't want that thick of a frame. So I am going to be actually doing a flat frame. So I'm gonna cut down four pieces, use some pocket holes to put them together, then get these legs attached to the frame and then attach the frame to the cabinet carcass. And then from there, we can start adding all of the uh, face framing pieces. <laughs>
we are moving right along. Oh my gosh, it is so nice working in an actual shop with an actual nice setup. It just makes things go so much faster. So the next step is adding the face framing pieces to the front of this cabinet. That's gonna cover up the plywood edge and it's also gonna cover up this gap at the bottom between the base and the cabinet carcass. I am going to use a table saw to rip the maple down into inch and a half strips and then use the miter saw to cut them down to the length and get them them attached to the front of this cabinet carcass. Let's do it. After getting the four outside trim pieces attached, I cut down one final piece to break up the cabinet space for a faux drawer and a cabinet door. Okay guys, I almost have a vanity. And I just went ahead and took this bottom frame off and moved the front legs forward because I wanted to be able to see the legs more. And once I added the frame pieces, I realized you couldn't see the legs that well. So I took them off, moved them forward, and I like how that looks so much better. What I am gonna do now, I got this decorative trim to put along the bottom edge of this vanity. This will also cover up that gap between the base and the cabinet carcass on the sides and just give this a more polished look altogether. I'm also contemplating running this trim at the top as well and seeing how that looks. I'm gonna start off with at least doing the bottom, see how that looks and go from there. Okay guys, I am still playing around with the idea of adding trim at the top of this vanity, but while I try to figure that out, I'm gonna get the top for this vanity cut down, and then I'm also gonna have to cut a hole in the top of this so that the sink that I got for the vanity can sit down into the space. This is also why I went with a faux drawer at the top because I'm not gonna be able to use that space once the sink is sitting down into the cabinet. So I'm gonna get started cutting this down to the depth and width that I need it to be. And then I'll try to figure out what I need to do to uh, cut the hole for the sink. After getting the top cut down, I set it on the vanity base and I realized pretty quickly that I did not want to add any trim to the top of this vanity. And to figure out how big to cut the hole for the sink, I measured the part of the sink that sits down in the vanity. And once I had those measurements, I figured out where the center of the top was and measured out from that center point. And basically from there, I just freehand drew out a circle and used my jigsaw to cut it out. I started small when cutting out the circle and I kept getting bigger and bigger until the sink fit nicely in the hole and I also liked the placement of the sink. Good morning guys! My mom says it looks like I'm going to summer camp but I don't care, I like this hat. <laughs> so, yesterday when I was at my cousin's shop, I cut the hole for the sink, and then I went on to move on to the next step, which was making a door and a faux drawer front, but then I realized I didn't have enough maple to do either of those things. So what I did is I just finished up the day at his shop using his table saw to cut a piece of plywood for the shelf 
that I'll be putting in the vanity, but I'm gonna wait to install that after my uncle gets the sink installed because I just don't want the shelf to get in his way. This morning I ran out and I got the pieces I need for the drawer and the door. So I need to get started finishing up this vanity because between today and tomorrow it needs to get done because my uncle is coming later tomorrow to uh, install the toilet and install the sink. So let's get to work. This faux drawer front was the biggest mistake I made while making this vanity. After getting the piece cut down, I thought the best way to attach it would be pocket screws, like I used for the trim piece that broke up the space. But I got the first two screws in place only to realize that I screwed through the front of the side trim pieces and I split the wood. Great. <laughs> I freaked out for a hot second, but luckily I had some extra trim pieces from the day before, so I got those cut down and I got the old trim pieces off and the new trim pieces on, but I was too afraid to use pocket holes again. So I cut down a scrap piece of plywood and I used glue and brad nails to attach that plywood to the back of the side trim pieces. Then I was able to use that plywood to attach the faux drawer front and the new trim piece that breaks up the space. <laughs> I was just freaking out. I thought I'd like completely damaged this thing, but we got it back on track and now it is time to make the door for this vanity. And this is gonna be a little bit trickier because it's gonna be an inset door. So my measurements have to be really, really precise so that there's enough of a gap so that nothing catches when you open and close the door. And this door is gonna be fairly easy to make. It's gonna be four pieces of wood that are screwed together using some pocket holes. And of course I'll use wood glue. And then for the center of the door, I got some cane webbing that I'm gonna attach. I'll wait to attach this until after everything is stained and all of that, but that is the plan. Once I have the four pieces screwed together, I am gonna install them to make sure that my measurements and everything works, and hopefully it does, and hopefully I don't have to redo it. <laughs> Wish me luck. When I was designing out this bathroom, I fell in love with this vanity from Pottery Barn. And when the first vanity didn't work out and I was looking for a second vanity, I found out that they had a 20 inch version of that same vanity. So I looked into getting it, but it wouldn't arrive for months. So I decided to actually base my whole design for this vanity off of the Pottery Barn one. And I actually think it looks pretty similar. The only real big difference, of course, is the marble top and sink. Oh my goodness, guys, it works. Yay, it's a simple little door, but I like it. Okay guys, so I'm going to move this thing outside, get it sanded down, and then I am going to stain it. And then I'm probably gonna let the stain sit for the night so that I can uh, then do top coat tomorrow and finish it up just in time for my uncle to come and get it installed. For stain, I used three different colors. I mainly used Special Walnut by Varathane for the overall color, but then I also used a small amount of Early American also by Varathane, to just make it a touch darker. And since I was going for that Pottery Barn vanity look, I wanted there to have a slight distressed look to this vanity. So after doing the first two stains, I went over the whole vanity with Hazelwood, also by Varathane. And the three stains together, I think really achieved that nice, light, distressed wood look that I was going for. And my mom kept wondering if the vanity was too light, but I ensured her that the lighter vanity is exactly what this bathroom needed. Between the dark floors and now the darker green color on the walls, I knew the light wood would really pop. 
Also, when picking out paint color or stain color, you have to take into consideration the lighting in the room, and since there's no natural lighting in this bathroom, I knew the vanity would look a little darker the second I actually moved it in there. Good morning, guys. Uh, this morning, the bathroom is looking very, very different, and it's actually looking like a bathroom again. Last night, my uncle came and he put in the new toilet, and he was gonna install the sink, but he didn't have a long enough pipe for the P-trap, so he's coming later today to install the sink officially. But as of right now, the vanity is officially screwed to the wall, and then we use some silicone on the bottom of the sink to get that stuck in place, and then I'll also do another round of silicone on the outside edge. I don't wanna jinx myself, but my plan for today is to finish this bathroom, or at least get to the point where I can quickly decorate it tomorrow. And the first thing in finishing this bathroom today is to officially finish this vanity. And to finish the vanity, I'm actually gonna be making a new door. So I'm gonna get started making that new door and let future Miley explain why I am making this new door and why it is gonna look so much better than the old one. So the first door that I made, I really didn't like the gap around the door. I tried to convince myself that it didn't bother me. I like it. But uh, it really bothered me. And I knew I could make a new door with a much better fit. Also, I didn't like the barrel hinges that I used with the original door. So I ended up ordering some specialty hidden hinges that work with a framed cabinet and an inset door. And luckily, I did bring my Craig jig for installing hidden hinges. The hinge works by adding a piece to the back of the frame and then of course you add a piece to the door and the two pieces snap together. And the day before I made the new door, I tested out these hinges using a scrap piece of wood to just make sure that they worked before I went ahead and made a new door. And look at that fit. Ugh, I'm so happy I made a new door. Okay, I just finished staining the door, and while I wait for that stain to dry, I am gonna finish up this shelf. I got some L-shaped brackets that I'm gonna use to hold the shelf up, and all I have to do is add some edge tape to the front of the shelf, and then I'm gonna cut a little notch out of the shelf to work around the pipe. I am so close <laughs> to finishing this vanity. The final thing that I have to do is add this cane and add a handle. I've been letting this cane soak for about 30 minutes in my mom's bathtub, so it's nice and malleable and is a lot easier to work with. So all I have to do is staple it to the back of the door, get the door installed, and then I'll attach a handle and this vanity is gonna be done. <laughs> Yay! To say that I am happy that I built this vanity, I think would be an understatement. I, I, I just love it. I'm so happy right now. So now that the vanity is done, I can go ahead and get the mirror installed now that I know where the vanity is gonna go and everything's in place. And then once I get the mirror installed, I'll be able to determine how big I wanna make these floating shelves above the toilet. And for the mirror, I went with just this plain black pivoting mirror. Um, I was trying to look for something vintage, but couldn't find anything. So I just got this off of Amazon and it comes with a template on where 
to screw in. So this is already set and leveled. So I'm just gonna drill some holes and get this mirror screwed in place. Show me life, show me love. Make a change, time is up. We can wait for better days, but the days won't come. Show me life, show me love. After I got the mirror up, I could finally determine how big I could make these shelves. And the most important thing about these shelves that I had to get right was I needed to make sure that they were centered over the toilet. Unlike that old towel rack that used to be on this wall. But having anything centered over the toilet does highlight the fact that the toilet placement is a little weird and it's not centered between the wall and the vanity and i really wish this toilet was just a little more to the left but unfortunately i couldn't change where the plumbing was so with all of that being said i could only make these shelves 16 inches wide to be centered over the toilet and i made them really nice and simple i just used scrap 2 by 10s and i cut them down to that 16 inch width and then i used my circular saw to make them 8 inches deep and to hold the shelves up I use these pretty cast iron brackets Good morning guys! Everything in this bathroom is hooked up and installed. My uncle came last night and <sighs> my sink and vanity, they work and I am so excited. So now all that is left to do is add some simple decorations and this bathroom is complete. That is it guys. This bathroom definitely got the much needed refresh it so desperately needed. And although the vanity situation was a huge pain, I'm honestly glad that the first two vanities didn't work out because I love this custom vanity so much. It is exactly what this bathroom needed and what I think this overall design needed. The light wood really pops off of that green shiplap. Also, running the shiplap up the walls and having it stop higher up really draws your eye up and makes the space feel so much bigger. And all of the decorative pieces that I was able to either find online or antiquing really brought this space together. So I hope you guys liked this video and project. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!